forgotten about it. I had come in from the shop and I was watching the news. You need a bigger hammer? <laughs> I need a bigger barrel. Uh, <laughs> okay. Crown hog saw a shadow on a tongue for a February week. No, he didn't see a shadow, did he? Nope. No. Nope. So theoretically, we're going to be bathing and basking in the sun in about three days. Long grass and I thought we had a new member here, but we don't. He just did. All right. I'm a new member, but I haven't actually signed up yet. So we could tell the give the club. Have you paid? Your, have you filled out the paperwork yet? I filled out the paperwork. I haven't written the check yet. Okay. If you stand up and tell the people who you are. And I'm Vic. Uh, I was turning like 20 years ago for about seven years. Okay. I stopped and uh, I'm trying to get back into it again. So I consider myself raw beginner. Okay. And I, I received the email from you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Barry. I think yeah, okay. Todd is a visitor. Oh, Todd is a visitor. Visitor. Yeah. Oh, Todd. And you have no plans of becoming a more... Engage wood turner. Oh, no, I didn't say that. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> just the way your host introduced you, I thought you were just uh, dropping in because he's a driver. Uh, well, that's yeah, well, you're the driver, one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'd love to have you as a member. I'll consider it. Especially somebody to keep him awake coming up from Quarryville. He was yawning quite a bit. I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, tonight. End of the meeting is the dues deadline. If anybody here has not paid their 2024 dues, uh, you can turn it in to uh, Rick here sometime tonight. Just point to Rick. I think I did point. Oh, okay. You didn't know I was wearing my glasses here. Okay. Uh, open shop this Saturday, 9 to noon as usual. And we have one more lathe uh, operational. It's always been operational, but it wasn't mounted before. Now it is. Um, Amtrak station display. John Kelsey, is he online? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Hear me. You could highlight John. He's going to be doing the Amtrak report. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have about 25 members have uh, submitted photographs for the Amtrak thing uh, with a total of about 150 pieces. Um, I went and had a look at the thing again today because I took the train today to New York. I mean, that's where I am, why I'm not with you. Um, and I have, I don't know, we're going to have to mock it up. Barry's got the tables there. We'll, we'll be marking out the actual shape of the display pin, plinths on the tables. Um, we're going to schedule a meeting later in February, I think on February the 27th, the Tuesday, before our March meeting. It'll be a Zoom meeting. We're going to review all of the photographs and have a discussion. It's, and it, it is not a critique. It's an opportunity to talk about the work that our members do with ourselves. So everyone is welcome to attend that and to participate if you want to or to listen if you just don't want to. Thomas and I will conduct the discussion. Uh, but uh, l like I say, our objective is not to critique work or say, oh, this is good and this is not good. That's not what it's about at all. Our objective is to look at the range of work that our members are making and say, oh, this will make a terrific illustration of this kind of wood turning. And let's make sure we include this work so that we, uh, we, we just have a good discussion and talk about the work and, and uh, get clear about what we like about it and what we want to see, uh, what we want to see on display. Uh, so that'll be the 27th, the Zoom meeting. I'll be sending out a notice about that. If anybody else would like to participate, you've got a little more time to do that. Give us some pictures by the 15th of February. We're going to drop a hard curtain at the 15th of February. Uh, all you have to do is send phone pictures to the one of the club's emails, Lancaster Woodturner Zoom at Gmail, or send them to me if you can't figure that one out. Uh, and we'll, we'll take your photos in respectfully. You can submit as many as five pieces multiple views if you want to. Uh, phone photos are fine. You don't have to go to any great lengths for the photos. We just want to see what kind of work people are making. And if you do s decide to join us or submit work, um, give me a, give me or give the club email uh, also a, a, a quick note saying what the woods are and how big the pieces are so we don't get diluted by something that's an inch big and we think it's three feet across and vice versa. Um, so any questions or comments about that? Anything anybody wants to know about it? Oh, 
Okay, in silence, I'm going to say thank you very much and see you all later. Thank you, John. And uh, by the way, thinking of the Amtrak display, Dave Blau, I don't know if he's online or not, but uh, John and uh, Mike Junkers had, uh, you can hand a couple of these out. These are going to be uh, accompanying the display. We had a thousand of them printed. What's that? They were up at the farm show. That's right. Right, Randy had them up there. I mean, what did we give you, 100, Randy? Something like that. We're going we're gonna to have the balance of the 1,000 replenishing the Amtrak display. Uh, Dave Blyle made this to, uh, we got to find out how to hang it. The, the case is all glass. And so I think maybe one of these 3M <laughs> pull strip things, you know, and hang it on the hook there. Yeah. Epoxy is to the glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the train station for you after we're all done, huh? <laughs> okay. Any comments or questions on the Amtrak display? Can you just kind of re repeat the timing of when the display will be? There might be some folks here that aren't familiar with Yeah, I'll do that. I'm, I'm not the. I can tell you that. I can tell you the timing of it. Uh, the short of it is we are going to want your work by April 1st. So if you're putting in pictures of work you made before and you want to make again, uh, you, you, we will need it here at the club by the April meeting. And you can bring it in ahead of that any time once we get through this thing at the end of February. And we'll start to work with the display spaces and arrange work and see what's working for us. But uh, we will need it from April 1st right through middle of August. So do not give us pictures of anything you're not willing to leave with us for that long. If you haven't been to the train station, the cases are uh, completely enclosed in glass. There's no way that the work can be stolen or vandalized. It, it can't be got at. So I think your work is safe. It's certainly safe with us here at the club space, uh, but it does need to be with us from April 1st until the middle of August. John, when's, that, when's the review date again? I missed that. It's the 27th of February. It'll be a okay. Zoom meeting at 7 o'clock. That's the week before our March meeting. And that date was chosen working around people's vacation. A lot of people are away in February. Thanks, John. Okay. Uh, for those of you who would find it more convenient to drop the stuff off at my house, you have my address on the uh, mailing list of uh, members. Uh, if you're from down south and you don't feel like driving up here, you can do that. I'll make sure it, it gets here. Uh, okay, John Ziegler, you're going to tell us about, uh, we've been talking, batting around about training, mentoring, Training trainers. I'm not going to mentor mentors. So a couple of things I wanted to put in front of everyone. Um, John Kelsey and I had a conversation with Ernie Conover. Many of you know Ernie is an experienced woodturner. Um, he's often at our meetings. He thought he should not join tonight simply so he thought we might speak more freely about his suggestion for what we spoke with him about, but there's basically two questions, I think. The first is, uh, as Barry said, one is he, Ernie makes a, a, has a class about becoming a good mentor. So that's the first one. The second one is, since we do have a lot of new turners or relatively new turners, Ernie has offered to um, conduct a class. One, this is going to be June 22nd and 23rd if we do this. Um, each session would cost the club $600. We may charge members to attend each of them, but we don't know what, because we don't know what we're going to actually ask Ernie to do with us. Uh, but the second one is teaching a novice turner. Um, Tom made a good point, you know, when I tried to distill and Ernie embellished my distillation of what each of these so-called workshops would um, amount to. And, and the effect of mentor, I'll just summarize it very quickly. Why be a mentor, desirable qualities of the mentor, uh, the relationship between the mentor and the mentee, 
and then the technical topics that they su he suggests be covered. And of course, that leads pretty quickly into teaching wood turning. And then, as Barry uh, suggested, there is kind of a there's a difference between mentoring, kind of a one to one relationship, and teaching, which could be one to several students. So the first question for folks to consider, we don't have to decide tonight because Ernie is only going to be, he's going to be here in June 22nd and 3rd. But think about how many people here would be interested in attending a session on how to be a good mentor. The second question is how many people would be interested in attending a session here, probably all day, a morning session, afternoon with a break in the middle, um, for new wood turners. And then the third potential that I discussed briefly with Ernie, but didn't really bounce it off to others, is maybe a third option, which is conduct two sessions, one teaching session for newer wood turners, and then maybe a second session for people who are more advanced that may want to learn something more that they, they aren't particularly knowledgeable about, even if they have some experience. So those are the three options that we have. So think about it. We don't have to make a decision tonight, um, but we do need to get back to Ernie probably in March sometime just so we understand what we need to do. There has been talk about how many people would attend um, the teaching session because, you know, we have, what, six or six ladies, I think, right now. That's not really that many people to attend an all-day session. I think we could probably have more if we had access to more ladies, but I'm not sure what we would do to bring more lathes here. So that's something else that we might consider. Tom. Um, how long is the learning to be a mentor session that's, scheduled? I mean, if he, if he did that, how long would that be? Well, he was talking about two, you know, morning and an afternoon as well, five or six hours, I think, a morning and an afternoon. All right, the reason I ask that is just yeah. um, from the sense of people participating in the workshop and the club paying Ernie to do the workshop, right? Uh, I I would vote that there be some fee associated with attending yep. one or both of them, because um, I think I just think people pay for something they are more committed to it. Um, agree, and it should bring money to the club. I mean, it could should be a, in essence a fundraiser of some sort, or maybe it doesn't bring extra money, but the club shouldn't necessarily outlay money for it. That's just my opinion, but I thought I'd share it. Good point. And again, um, John politely pressed Ernie on his fee and asked if there was any, asked if there would be any movement, and John or Ernie said no. <laughs> <laughs> so each day would cost $600 if we do it. And again, we may be able to tailor it somehow differently than what he initially suggested, but that's something I'd like to ask everyone to think about so that we can discuss it in more detail um, in March. John probably mentioned this to you, but uh, we had Ernie a number of years ago, came in for a couple of days. And if I recall correctly, Saturday he came in and it was open for everybody and he demoed and we all watched. And then, um, I mean, he showed everything from sharp, proper sharpening, right. and you name it. And the Sunday, was the paper, and I don't remember. I think we had six lathes there. You know, mm -hmm. some were brought in from outside, right? And people were doubling up. <clears throat> but I tell you, I mean, Ernie's an outstanding uh, teacher. He's a technician. I mean, uh, he is. He technician. is. And yeah. if you're concerned about using a skew, or you're concerned about you know what kind of bowl grind you should have, right? This man will <clears throat> calm your nerves immediately. He's fantastic. So that's a fourth notion that we asked him if he will do a demonstration. Was it an all-day demonstration? It really was like an all-day. The first day there was a whole bunch of different things that he showed. So that sounds almost like it would be, without having hands-on for us, it would be him going through soup to nuts about wood turning. Yes. Now, and this was pre-Zoom. This was pre-virtual. This is, yeah. you know. So a lot of that stuff you can pick up like, even with YouTube right now or yeah, what, and, what's there. And the other thing, that, and I, I don't mean to diminish Ernie's knowledge and, and his notion of having a, a course or a, a workshop, but we also have a lot of really experienced people here who could 
on your own pair up with a young or anybody doesn't have to be a, a new turner as a so-called mentor without having a formal introduction ernie feels strongly that there are certain things that ought to be considered when one is a mentor uh, it just begs the question does the club feel that that's worth a day of ernie's time to learn that yeah. so yeah. So there's so the, those are four suggestions. The interpersonal first two, characteristics. And interpersonal characteristics is you know the other thing is understanding the mentor mentee relationship, trying to find out something about the mentee, like what they do or did for a profession, so that he knows how to or a mentor knows how to talk to them. Like he and I were talking, and I told him I've been an architect. He goes, so then I'll talk to you about the modulus of elasticity or something of this and that and the other. Whereas somebody, I think he said a lawyer, wouldn't have a clue what that is, you know. So, but I get his point, right? It's understanding where the person's coming uh, to turning from. So, so think about that for the for March meeting, and then we will figure out what we want to do and what the club. Well, his fee is six hundred dollars per day. So, what the club wants to, um, if we go forward, maybe charge people to attend. Does he cover transportation? He's coming anyhow. His wife is attending some kind of a um, spinning or some kind of a thing here. So there's no transportation or, or, or cost to stay here because he may stay with John and uh, Tina. So. I just wanted to ask Mike, what kind of a uh, turnout did we get for those sessions? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was good. Good. It was okay. Well, thank I mean, you. Bring... He's a very charismatic guy. He talks about his father. He talks about the family business. He talks about building wooden lathes. Well, if anybody yeah, spent any time on the on the uh, coffee hours and Ernie starts talking, yeah, my head explodes because he's into the details in a heartbeat and he knows everything backwards and forwards. Which, to a, when I first started, I mean, even now I'm relatively new turner, but I was like, I didn't even know what to make of it because it was over my head. But I, by listening after a while, you start to get it and it makes sense. And then you start to respect and understand what he's talking about. So the demonstration would make that bring that to home, I think. Hey John, to move this forward, should we try any kind of like survey among the sure local? Sure. Local members? I mean, if like you and I want to get together to, to craft something or something, okay. what have you, let's let's work on that. Is that OK? All right. Second item is for March. Tentatively, uh, I have scheduled Mike Peace, who Many people know who Mike Peace is. I think he's recently hit 10 million YouTube views of his um, videos. But he uh, has volunteered to do a live Zoom with demo with us in March. And so for those of you who know Mike, you can go online and probably find most of these topics covered in his videos. But he has offered to conduct a live video via Zoom for us question is, what are we interested in having him do? Um, I'm just going to read quickly through this. Um, he talks about the skew. He talks about texturing and spiraling. Lidded box. A chess set. Turning a chess set. Um, how to chuck wood. Not throw it away. <laughs> Introduction to spindle turning. Yeah, we all. <laughs> I just did that today. <laughs> uh, a multi-axis water bird, Christmas ornaments. As I go through this, it struck me that some of these things folks here can probably demonstrate as well as Mike and even at workshops. So that's why I wanted to kind of throw this out. Christmas tree ornaments, birdhouse ornament, small spindle projects. Hand chased threads, rather special. Um, and he talks about his threading jig, but I think I recall a coffee hour that John and Mike were talking about this threading jig that they he had made a while ago, and it got published in AW, and then they discovered or Mike discovered that it actually doesn't work so well. So, but it's out there, and people keep talking about the threading jig, and Mike says he didn't know how to call that to zoom back, right? Um, and then coffee scoops. So that's kind of it. It just felt to me like we ought to do something that was maybe a little less accessible with the folks we have here at the club. So I think Tom can put out a list. And so I'll, I'll send this <laughs> list to you because I need to let Mike know a few weeks ahead of time just so he's ready to do that. And um, is he so, going to charge a fee for that? No. No, he's doing it in his own shop in Georgia. So. 
Um, I, we came across it because we had a conversation when John was putting together his interview of the four guys that are you know turning four ways, Thomas Love and Richard Raffin and Mike and Sam Angelo. Mike Peace and I were kind of the guinea pigs on the Zoom to see how, for John to see how the interaction might work with several people on Zoom to talk with each other. So we got into the conversation about demonstrations and Mike offered to do a Zoom for us. So, so I'll send you that list and uh, I may I may send send this to you so you can just forward it, but I also think we could just, I mean, people can read it quickly. We'll, I'll send a bold, forwarded list just so you can quickly see what it is and maybe we can get something back within a week or so so that I can let Mike know what we're gonna ask him to do. And that's all I have to ask you, but I would just say tonight's demo was going to be by Doug because a few weeks ago, he, or last meeting, he showed us his um, long, skinny spindle pot, three uh, pots, but he had to go to, he had to go away for work. So, Angelo, who is Angelo? No, oh, Angelo saved my butt. And um, so, Angelo is going to be doing tonight's uh, demonstration for us. So, thank you. All right. So beginning of January, when I took over, we had uh, 58, 81, 83 in the account. We took in some money, uh, $242. So right now we have 61, 23, 83. But I know there's a couple expenses that are coming in for the table and for internet. And I think that's it. I'm not sure. So we're, we're in good shape at the moment. Thank you, Rick.